I really uh, feel like I owe my life to him. If it wasn't a dog in that grave, it would have been a man. It won maybe more than one. A monument will be dedicated next month to some of the lesser-known heroes of World War II. Don Knapp reports on the dogs of war. A grateful America welcomed returning veterans at the end of World War II. Soldiers, sailors, airmen, marines, and dogs. But except for a small cemetery on a distant island, there are few honors for the dogs of war that gave their all. Fifty years ago, Dr. William Putney's Marine commander on Guam ordered him to bury a combat casualty. 24 dogs were buried in the cemetery, killed while sniffing out enemy troops or warning of ambush or running through enemy lines with supplies. Five years ago, Putney returned to Guam to find the dogs' graves neglected, run down and overgrown. Putney commissioned sculptor Susan Bahari Wilner to create a monument to the dogs. To me, this is more a subject, more um, about love, even though it's a war monument. And I hope that it bring, people can take a piece of love back when they see that piece, that they'll, they'll feel the love that we have for the dogs and that the dogs had for us. On July 20th, Putney and other veteran dog handlers will dedicate the monument to the American dogs of war that served in the Pacific. December the 8th, 1941, only a day after the sneak attack on Pearl Harbor, the small island of Guam was invaded by the Japanese. It was virtually undefended. It held out for only four days before falling. No other American civilians suffered so much in World War II as the citizens of Guam. They were beaten, they were beheaded, hundreds were put in concentration camps. On July 21st, 1944, the Americans struck back. American Marine, Navy, and Army casualties exceeded 7,000. An estimated 18,500 Japanese were killed, while another 8,000 roamed loose in the jungle. Sooner or later became a problem for the war dog platoons. Among the dead and wounded were 25 dogs specially trained by the Marines to search out enemy hiding in the bush, detect mines, booby traps, alert troops and foxholes at night to approaching enemy, and to carry messages, ammunition, and medical supplies. As the commanding officer of the 3rd War Dog Platoon and veterinarian for the 2nd and 3rd Platoons, both of which served with the 3rd Marine Division on Guam, I cared deeply for the dogs who were wounded or killed and for the young Marines who lost their partners and companions. Twenty-four dogs gave their lives for the liberation of Guam. They were buried in a rice paddy on the landing beach at Assan in a small section of the Marine Cemetery. Always faithful, Kurt, a doberman who saved the lives of 250 Marines when he silently alerted to Japanese soldiers. The Marines were saved, but Kurt and his handler, PFC Allen Jacobs, were critically injured by an exploding enemy mortar shell. I tried desperately to save him. After the surgery, I took him into my foxhole that night, and throughout the night, 16-inch shells from the Navy 
bombardment battleships offshore whistle overhead, and when they struck the ground, the ground would just slam into your face. Kurt was unable to protect himself, so I gathered him in my arms to keep him from slamming down on the ground as the shells burst. At 3 o'clock in the morning, Kurt stopped breathing. Kurt was the first of the 24 dogs who died in action on Guam. As a dog lover, it feels appropriate to honor man's best friend today, who has served us so well in so many capacities. And after all, how many smiles have dogs put on our faces for so long, for so many centuries? As an American, I want to thank the veterans of World War II, including the war dogs and their handlers, who made it possible for my generation to live in freedom and for us to be here today. As an artist, I feel a great deal of responsibility. I felt a great deal of responsibility and inspiration to create Always Faithful. I, I felt very moved by the many stories I heard and read about these valiant dogs. <clears throat> I was also inspired by photographs of our war dogs as well as photos of Dobermans from the 1940s through today. Most of all, I was moved by the spirit of these courageous dogs who are the embodiment of love and devotion. I hope this sculpture does justice to the noble war dog and expresses the love we have for all of our dogs. From World War II to Vietnam, man's best friend has been at his side. Thousands of war dogs have gone into battle, serving as messengers and sentries, sniffing out enemy snipers, and providing patrols with almost perfect protection from ambush.